So ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Sharon Whiteman and I'm part of the executive team for the Lyme Disease Association of Australia. And we're very privileged to have Juliet Wilson here today. Um, she's authored a new book on Lyme disease and her experience of going through that. I'll just give you a little bit about her background before we get started. Juliet survived over a decade of relentless health issues and being told, but you don't look sick by dozens of doctors and specialists before finally coming across a doctor who recognized what she was dealing with. Realizing that there are so many people like her around the world, not diagnosed properly and struggling for years, Juliet felt like it was important to share what she'd learned in the hope of helping others regain their health and survive the experience along the way. She's a senior project manager, a photographer, an artist, an author, and a mother. She lives with her son in Melbourne, and we're very lucky to have her here today. Juliet, thank you so much for immediately saying yes to this. <laughs> That's my pleasure. Yeah, I mean, I, as everybody would know, this is part of a series that we're doing for May in 2022. And there, you know, there's significant, understandably significant uh, loss of hope in Australia. So, you know, stories like yours and research like yours is, is really vital to give people. As a matter of fact, um, I recommended your book to someone in the inbox yesterday, you know, because she was really struggling and she'd, she'd run out of all the practitioners and she's mm -hmm. sensitive to herbs, you know, even with a naturopath yeah. now, she's reacting to the herbs and she didn't know where to go. So, um, you know, I, I did recommend a couple of naturopaths that understand that herbal sensitivity and have other ways to work around it. But I know your book will be give her a lift as well. So um, thank you for what you've done. So let's start with just a little bit of background with you. Um, tell us a little about you and your story of getting sick and um, the steps forward. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I grew up in eastern Canada and also in the northeastern part of the US in Maine, which is an endemic tick area. Um, and I came to this beautiful country 31 years ago <laughs> when I was 22. And Melbourne was actually the first stop on my round the world trip. And um, I've lived here ever since. Um, but before um, before I say anything more, I would really like to acknowledge the work done by you and the rest of the team at Lyme Disease Association of Australia in supporting and advocating for Australian Lyme and associated disease sufferers. Um, so yeah, my journey, um, in my late 20s, <laughs> I had a tarot card reading and a psychic told me that I was going to stop work when I was 39. Um, I hoped that she meant I was going to retire young but I kind of thought that was unlikely. So I laughed it off and I just went on with my life. And um, over a decade later in 2008, her words came back to me. Um, at, that, at that time, at age 39, my world had collapsed and I was so ill that I had to stop work for two years as I slowly recovered. Um, I had never dreamed that this might be what she was foreshadowing. Um, what happened is that after separating from my young son's father, um, I had become very unwell. Almost overnight, I lost five kilos. I had crushing insomnia, digestive distress, headaches, sore throat, burning patches of skin, brain fog, exhaustion, cold sores in my eyes, hormone and body dis temperature dysregulation, and I was hypersecreting cortisol. And that was just the start of what ended up being a very long 12 years. Um, when I look back, there were signs that I had a compromised immune system earlier in my life. It took me nearly a year to recover from glandular fever as a teenager. Um, I've always needed more sleep than anyone else. I've always caught every virus and bacterial infection that came anywhere near me and had them worse than anyone else. I've always been told by doctors and practitioners that I had the worst reactions they'd ever seen to treatments. What I now know is that contracting Lyme disease at a young age had impaired my immune system and over time left me unequipped to fight off anything else. So I kind of got better after that first two years, but I still wasn't quite right. And over the next 10 years, I was diagnosed with a variety of other things. First, um, adrenal fatigue, then heavy metal toxicity, then SIBO, then mold illness. And I treated each one of those, but never seemed to regain my full health. And I just had this instinct that there was still something that was undiagnosed. Wow. I mean, and I know people listening today will probably be nodding their heads, you know, like that my journey is not dissimilar mm. um, in that it took it just took so long. And it's like, not, you know, banging down doors everywhere you can go, isn't it? Just yeah. trying to get that. And so 
how did you finally get di a diagnosis of Lyme disease, Julia? Mm. Well, as you said, you know, for most of us, it does take over a decade to be diagnosed. And during that time, I saw dozens of doctors, specialists, naturopaths, chiropractors, Chinese medicine specialists, kinesiologists, acupuncturists, massage therapists. And like, you know, most other Lymeys spent thousands and thousands of dollars, um, you know, on to fund testing, treatments, supplements. And I, you know, did that through extending my mortgage six times. It's, it might sound a bit wacky, but it was actually something another tarot card reader said <laughs> 25 years after the first one that actually led me to seeking out a diagnosis that changed everything for me. So I told her that I'd been sick for years and I felt there was something that had not been picked up yet. And she did a spread and she looked at me and she said, you know, she looked at me very directly and said, you have Lyme. She said, you got it when you were six years old. You, you lived somewhere flat with shallow beaches and forest and you need to get tested. Um, she perfectly described the island where I lived when I was six and I spent more time outdoors than in as a child, both at the beach and in the forest on our farm. Um, until then, my other diagnoses had seemed like legitimate reasons for most of those symptoms that I was struggling with. And because testing for Lyme disease is complicated and expensive, and I thought Lyme was rare, I had never considered being tested for it before. So although I was a little bit skeptical, I thought there could be something in what she said, and there was no harm investigating. So I sought out a Lyme literate doctor in Melbourne and was not really surprised when testing showed that I had Lyme as well as pretty much every possible co-infection, including um, Bartonella, Babesia, Ehrlichia, Mycoplasma, Rickettsia, EBV, parasites, and on and on, um, which I know is, is very common for most of us as well. Yeah, it's, um, you know, in listening to your story, it, it just makes me shake my head about why people can't see a multi-system illness mm -hmm. as a multi-system illness, right? They try to pigeonhole it. I, it. You know, it sounds like you had that experience as well, pigeonhole yeah. it into one issue. And that's one where you get these system. labels of multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So how, so that was basically your first diagnosis. What was your journey like to recovery? Well, not long after I was diagnosis, diagnosed, um, I learned, listened to all 35 hours of the online 2020 International Lyme Disease Summit. Um, you know, when I was diagnosed, but obviously here in Australia, you know, could not get access to um, easy access to treatment. So I was trying to figure out how to approach this. And I listened to Dr. Jay Davidson and Dr. Todd Watts of Microbe Formulas talking about chronic illness, Lyme disease, and this treatment protocol they had developed. Listening to it, I got really excited. I then got onto the Microbe Formulas website and you know, looked at every video and article I could find in their learn section. And I joined the Detox Heroes Facebook group, which is for people using that treatment protocol. Um, and that was a wonderful resource. And what I learned is that what sets the microbe formulas and cell core biosciences treatment protocols apart is that they combine effective herbal supplements with a specific approach. And it was through their research and experience that Dr. Todd and Dr. J had gained the knowledge that recovery is more successful and people will experience fewer side effects if they follow a particular order to their treatment protocol. So knowing this, they developed their treatment protocol um, and there were thousands of people all around the world who were successfully recovering from Lyme and chronic illness through using them. So I detail what um, that order and approach are in my book. And I thought, wow, this protocol sounds perfect for me. So I ordered the first phase and I got started. Wow. And, you know, we'd probably have to qualify that there's no one treatment pathway that's right that's for right. everyone, but, you know, giving people the power into their own hands mm. is the most important thing in Australia right now, because literally, you know, doctors are refusing Lyme patients out of self-preservation. You know, I can't judge. I'm not walking in their shoes and what their life is, mm. but APRA and the regulatory bodies have made it absolutely impossible for them to function ethically in the way that they like to do so um thank goodness there's options like this so yeah, really. you know i'm sure it wasn't a straightforward rise to recovery <laughs> you know what were the biggest challenges along the way for you oh wow um look i guess with chronic illness for me the biggest challenge was just trying to keep the train on the tracks um i was a single mom i needed to work giving up was not an option 
And it was very difficult to maintain that belief on the hardest days of terrible symptoms that I would find the answers and would regain my health. And just to keep finding that strength and courage to keep putting, putting one foot in front of the other, despite that voice in the back of my head that kept saying, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Why doesn't anyone believe how unwell I am? Yeah, that psychological impact is immense, isn't it? Mm. It's um, such a burden. And what were your biggest wins, do you think, Juliet? Um, th I guess there were two major wins for me along the way. The first was really gaining that understanding that when your immune system is compromised due to an untreated underlying illness, such as Lyme disease, it's very easy then to get other illnesses and infections. And because so many of them have similar symptoms, it can be easy for some of them to go undiagnosed for a very long time. Each of them is a burden on your body and cumulatively they can wreak havoc. So now I know that you'll only recover when you remove all of the toxins, pathogens and infections in a holistic way. And it was when I read um, Dr. Richard Horowitz's book, How Can I Get Better? Where he uses the analogy of, if you go to the doctor with 16 nails in your foot and they only remain, remove one or two of them, the pain won't stop. When I read this, that's when the penny dropped for me um, about the way that this that I needed to approach this. And the second win, I guess, was discovering that there was um, this comprehensive protocol that would take care of all of those things in a holistic way. And it really gave me a sense of hope that I would recover. And what I, the other things I really love about their um, products is that they're formulated for sensitive people like us yeah. by two doctors in the US who had personal experiences themselves with Lyme co-infections. It's a herbal protocol. It's made from really beautiful quality ingredients. And the um, products are designed so that you can alter the doses really easily and you can even microdose them by the drop. One thing that I really love is that you can actually buy these products in Australia now and you don't no longer have to, you know, fly, spend tens of thousands of dollars to fly overseas to, to a clinic, for instance. You can self-guide yourself through this protocol. There's enough um, schedule and dosing information. Or if you prefer, you can work with a pr practitioner who's familiar with it. So having... Um, you know, a, a roadmap forward really gave me that, that sense of hope. Wow. And so for people who, you know, are quite sick and cognitively mm. impacted, is it something simple to follow for yes. those of us who's lost our brain? <laughs> yeah, there are phases. Yeah. There are particular products you use in each phase. There's a chart that comes with what time of day to take them and how many to take. Um, yeah, there's a lot of support material that makes it very easy to self-guide. I did get to the point in the protocol where I thought I would benefit from some guidance, um, you know, on, on a few different things. And so I consult with um, a doctor in, in the States who used the protocol himself to recover and uses it with lots of patients just to get, to have a sounding board when I did have questions that came up was really useful. Yeah, I can imagine that. And then what brought you to writing a book about your journey? Mm. Is it cathartic or healing or... <laughs> service well, or all of the above look i guess i feel so strongly that the blessing that has come out of being unwell for so many years is that I, I can now help other people with what i've learned along the way and hopefully help people avoid some of the pain i experienced you know as my health issues became more complex in spite of everything somehow somehow i maintained that belief that i would be one of the health success stories i read occasionally read about where people made a full recovery after years of bizarre varied symptoms. And I promised myself that when I eventually recovered, I would write a book to help others who might be suffering from a similar suite of illnesses. Um, it was really after listening to a podcast about the trauma um, of dealing with chronic long-term illnesses compounded further by doctors and by family and friends who are unsympathetic or disbelieving that my ideas kind of started to form. Um, that podcast resonated very deeply and it got me thinking about all the different types of traumas that occur when you're sick for so long. You know, for instance, on top of dealing with the dismissive doctors who trivialized my illness, losing my job in that first round of illness, losing friends and relationships, losing my healthy, active life, I was feeling pretty lost, um, isolated and defective. In addition, um, I was struggling with the financial stress of appointments and supplements that were just keeping me functioning. And for so many years, I suffered in silence at work because I was scared of losing my job again, and I had to work extra hard to appear to be com competent. 
And, you know, I know that these experiences are not unique. So I wrote this book in the hope that others can recognize their own or even a loved one's journey in mine and can, and that reading my story gives them the confidence that they will find the answers that they need to get well too. Um, also, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd. <laughs> I do tons and tons of research. And in that 12 years, I researched the heck out of each one of those illnesses. And so basically, I wanted to share the kind of simple, practical and comprehensive information I wish I'd had access to along the way, written from the perspective of what a patient would want to know. And I really hope that the resources I provide help people to feel informed, empowered, and that using them improves their experience. Um, because the book is more than just a personal journey. It does share some of my personal journey, but each section provides helpful, practical, easily digestible information and resources for each of the illnesses, as well as common pitfalls to avoid <laughs> during treatment. And I fell into most of them. It highlights the importance of comprehensive testing and diagnosis so you can be treated holistically and finally recover. recover. Um, you know, Complex long-term illness is very common now, and millions of people have been unwell for many years and are unable to find answers. Without reliable diagnostic tests, diagnoses of, you know, vague diagnoses of chronic fatigue, IBS, or fibromyalgia are often made on clinical criteria. But it's now known that if you suffer from these or others, such as adrenal dysfunction, heavy metal toxicity, biotoxin or mold illness, or Lyme disease, there's a good chance you probably have a whole suite of them. Mm -hmm. And that's because of the way um, their opportunistic nature when your immune system is low and the synergistic way they work together. Because as I said before, many of them have similar symptoms. It's easy to, for some of them to go undiagnosed, but people can take heart in knowing now that this suite of illnesses actually has a name now MSIDS or multiple systemic infectious diseases syndrome, which is a term coined by Dr. Richard Horowitz. And it's common, it's treatable, and you can recover. Um, so I really wanted to also share the insights I gained. Um, after realizing that we can expect the people around us to understand what we're experiencing through chronic illness and that they need guidance as to what support we need as well, their journey is also stressful and difficult. So as well as the illness sections, there are also sections on how the trauma of dealing with chronic long-term illness is compounded by doctors, family, and friends who are unsympathetic or disbelieving. Um, there's a section with tips for the sufferer, how to maintain your sanity when you want to curl up and give up, um, tips for loved ones, a way to help those close to you understand what you need, um, as well as tips for medical professionals and health practitioners. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really pleased that the book has received great feedback so far, which makes me feel so happy because it feels like it's filling the, the objectives um, for writing it. And I was particularly over the moon when Dr. Richard Horowitz, the world leading Lyme doctor, read my manuscript and then offered to write an introduction. Um, he's dedicated his life to helping and advocating for those with Lyme disease. And I know that we are all grateful and highly value the strategic counsel he's provided to the Lyme Disease Association of Australia. And to have his blessing uh, with the book meant the world to me. Um, Dr. Todd Watts of Microformulas and Cell Core Bios Biosciences has also read and endorsed the book. And um, my doctors, naturopath and other health professionals have all read the manuscript as well and commented on what a useful resources it will be for their patients. So I'm really excited to get it out into the world so it can really start helping people. I, it's the book that I wish I had to read myself 12 years ago. Here we go. I don't know if I'll be able to see it in the... Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> I can hold it up. I've got... Um... Oh, yours works perfect. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. And um, I think we're uh, launching it tonight on Facebook. Um, and there'll be options there of, of how you can get a book. Um, what's your top advice to Australians sick with Lyme and associated diseases, Juliet? Oh, my top advice, look, on top of the stress and pressure and nonstop pace of our lives, we are up against unprecedented levels of pollutants, toxins, chemicals, <laughs> pathogens, and the cumulative effect of those can be devastating. Complex long-term illness is common and, um, you know, for those of you who are struggling with complex chronic illness, I know you've tried many things, but please read my book and look into and do a comprehensive treatment and detox protocol. Don't lose hope. You can and will get better. Now oh, that's awesome, Juliet. So um, 
where just before I, I we finish, where can people purchase your book? It's available on Amazon in all marketplaces around the world. Um, yeah, so quick, easy, there. and simple, <laughs> even from Australia, isn't it? So, Juliet, what's in your heart to leave people with today? Oh, look, um, you know, my book is dedicated to all of those of you who are suffering from complex long term illness. I want you to know you're not alone. Um, I and so many others understand what you're up against. Please have compassion for yourself and know that your illness and suffering is not in your imagination or your fault and you can and will get well. Awesome, Juliet. You know, um, I haven't had time to read the book yet. I, I got it yesterday, but um, I can endorse Juliet's nerdy aspect of her. She, she pops <laughs> into our Limey Lunch support room that we do every Tuesday afternoon and it's just like an encyclopedia <laughs> i think people are going to start to save up their questions <laughs> for when you arrive so god bless you thank you for what you're doing and you know recovering and then giving back i think that's you know the very essence of what's needed in society and especially in our lyme community so thank you very much for doing this for us today it's absolutely my pleasure thank you sharon